Good morning to everybody this morning. I'd like to talk about a subject that I can remember must have been 40 years ago. I got a magazine, and a Christian magazine by a church in Australia. That makes sense. And it had a very well-written article about sanctification, being sanctified. That's one subject that I had read in college, but had never studied very, very deep at all. I could know that I was so fascinated by that. For six weeks, I preached a series on sanctification. I believe we don't understand sanctification. I don't think we even know what it is all about. A lot of times we like to talk about justification. <laughs> uh, we are justified by the blood of Christ. We like to think about what we have as far as the glory that we have. Now we have a great glory. We have God, our Father. Jesus is our Savior. The Holy Spirit's our guide. We can rejoice at that. But so oftentimes, the word sanctification, if you look at the meeting, then you might find a little different. But the one I can remember and I love is the words that says sanctification is setting apart for a holy purpose. We are sanctified. We are set apart for a holy purpose. So oftentimes, we like to think that we as Christians, we are, we are set apart so that God will save us. And that is true. But God didn't save us to be an ornament on a hood of his church. He, he saved us to be sanctified, to be an engine. <laughs> Transmission, a part of the workingness of his kingdom. That's what we are. We are, we are sanctified. We see the word sanctified used quite a few times in the Bible. We want in this short lesson today get a chance to look at all of them, but we will look at a few. I want to start out by reading Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 11 saying this. For both he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified are all from one Father. For which reason he is not ashamed to call us brethren. We, we are from Christ. We are from God. That's why God and Christ is not afraid to call us brethren. Now we'd like to use the word children. And that's because so often times we like to think of ourselves as children because we know children don't have the same responsibility as an adult, right? But here he calls us brethren. We are brethren. It says we are sanctified. It says both he who sanctifies. We are sanctified when we become Christians. When we become Christians. We are sanctified. We are brethren. And we need to act like it. So oftentimes we need to be, and I have said this before to the brethren here, they they know this illustration. But when I was 16 years old, I got to go to work in heavy machinery and work in making Interstate 40. My dad was a was a supervisor for the construction company. He was in profit sharing for the company. He got a check on profit sharing every, every July. He would get a check for a few hundred, almost sometimes a thousand dollars. A lot of money back in the 1960s. I can remember when I was 16, I wanted a job. The office manager for the company when he said, hey, your son is getting to be 16, right? Dad said, yes. He said, well, why don't he go to work for the company? Dad said, you got to be 18 to go to work for the company. He said, no. Everybody else does. But you own a little bit of the company, profit sharing. 
and you own enough of the company that we can have your son work for you as an owner, part owner of the company. He said, I own. He said, well, you don't own much, Jess. You don't own much. So I went to work at 16. The only person that I ever knew in that whole, and, and I knew a lot of people, there was hundreds of people who worked for Gross Construction. I was the only one I knew of that ever went to work at 16. My cousins couldn't go to work at 16 because they wasn't his son. But I was, I belonged to my father. And so at 16, I, and I got to go to work, but I can remember that we would leave. I had to be at work six o'clock in the morning. We would get up and my mom would pack our lunch and I would leave. Dad would go out and start the, the truck and then I would get up and I would carry our lunches out. And my mom always, I think almost always, said the same thing every morning when I left the door. Look at me and said, son, don't forget who your daddy is. What? Somebody said, why? Because she knew that I, I would not have been able to make a job making <laughs> real good money back then for a 16-year-old, making good money for a 20-year-old. As far as that go, but she wanted me to don't forget who your father is. And brethren, I think it's time for me to say to every Christian that can hear me and listen to me, is I want to say to you the same thing that my mother said to me. Don't forget who your father is. He has sanctified us and set us apart. We are set apart because of his son who died for us. We are set apart by God because he sent that son unto us. We need to realize that. It says this in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. It says this about sanctification. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and make your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved brainless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I, we could go into a whole study of this, those three things that it said. It says, and may your whole spirit soul and body i can remember when i was a young man about the same time when i was 16 i wasn't i wasn't familiar with the church the church of christ and congregations around wasn't very familiar with it i was going to a religious group and and i can remember going and and, and, and enjoying it, it was quite an emotional place. But I can remember one time watching the preacher unload a bunch of liquor at his house from his trunk, going into the house. They was having a party. I couldn't understand that. But then I heard him and some of the others said, you know, we have to realize that our body keep on sinning, but our spirit is saved. What? What? I didn't know that verse, this verse here then, but I do now. When we, we look at this, when we look at the spirit and the soul and the body, the body is what we do. We are the temple of the, of the Holy Spirit, the temple of God. That's why we keep our bodies. We, we try, you know, we don't neglect our bodies. We don't beat our bodies. We, if some the doctor says don't, you know, don't drink this or don't do eat this, then I don't do it because I don't want to harm my body. Because God said to keep our bodies sanctified, and I think they're sanctified for a holy purpose. And then, and then I, I, I need to go on with time. We look at the our body, but also it says our our spirit. I think that what kind of, you know, I've heard people say, boy, he has a good spirit about him. Uh, a, f a football player, you know, a football player can uh, be two talented men, 
playing football, but one can have a spirit that makes him a good star, even a superstar, with the same ability somebody else has, but he has the spirit to play the game. We know that. You know some of those, don't you? Brother Kelly, you know that. We have, but then we have the soul. And that is the soul, that, that's that inside of us. That soul that we have that knows right from wrong in the spirit. And, and, and some said, well, what is the soul? Well, today, some people call it the conscience. I think the conscience is both the spirit and the soul, myself, mixed together. But we have that inner being of who we are in our mind. So our, I would say it this way. We are sanctified and we need to be Christians in both mind, heart, and body. Our heart being whichever one you want, our soul, are completely. We need to be sanctified, set apart every in our thinking, in our action. In our very emotion, we have to be set apart for God. The other part of being sanctified is somebody said, well, I want a description of it. Well, <laughs> the description's in this book. So let me read you the description. It may take 27 hours, but we should get done before. No, I won't read the whole book. We don't have time, but I want to read part of two different chapters maybe a little long but I think this to me this wraps up what it is to be sanctified I want you to turn with me if you would to 1st Timothy you would turn to, uh, to there to I said Timothy 1st Peter turn to 1st Peter if you would chapter 3 1st Peter chapter 3 we're going to begin there at verse 18. Talking about sanctified. We are sanctified because we are sanctified by God, by Christ. But Christ was sanctified too. He was set apart from his Father in heaven for a holy purpose. That's why we are like Christ. That's why we say we are Christians. It says that here in 18, For Christ also suffered once, for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. He did that. By whom also he went and preached to the Spirit in prison, who formerly was disobedient when once the divine long suffering waited in the days of Noah. While the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight souls, were saved through water. Here is also the antitype, which now save us, baptism. Not the removing of the theft of the flesh, but the answering of a good conscience towards God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It, it took, we look at, the baptism. Here it says, no one then was saved by baptism. We, we know the baptism means to be immersed. A lot of people think and don't understand because some say, well, Noah was saved by, by the ark. Noah wasn't saved by the ark. The trouble was not the trouble that that Noah had to be saved from was the sins of the world. Amen. His own relations. Some of them probably close relations. They were sinning and they were forgetting God. And it says their imagination was always away from God. They was away from God in body, in spirit, and in soul. And Noah's two boys their family to come was in danger of being overcame by sin. So yes, they were saved by water.
by way of the ark. If they had went in that ark and stayed there for a year and came out, the world would have been just like it was. But they were separated from sin. It says, a like figure unto baptism. It says in the old King James, like figure to him unto baptism does also now save us. Baptism's not the, not the water, but the action of obedience. I've heard people accuse me and say, you believe in water salvation. I do not. I believe in grace salvation. It's the grace of God that gave the direction to Noah and his boys of how to build the ark. It was their faith and their obedience that led them to build that ark. It was their faith and obedience that led them to go into the ark. And they didn't have to shut anybody else out too. They didn't keep anybody in. The Lord shut the ark. We don't condemn people. We cannot condemn people. We have to teach people to get into the ark. If they don't get in. We have to cry. The thing about it is, Noah preached. And I'm going to preach and try to get my family, my loved ones, and I'm going to try to get every one of your family and your loved ones I meet to come in, to come in and be saved from their sin. Be sanctified. To be sanctified from all of this. And notice it says, chapter 4, I'd like to continue. It says, therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, Arm yourself also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh have ceased sin from sin. That he no longer should live what? Live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of man, but for the will of God. We need to live for the will of God. My wife loves few years ago and she saw a few of them and you don't see them anymore there was a bracelet that the young people a lot of them wore and said what would Jesus do I, I, I like that I wish it was also what would God have me do I'd like to have that in the other arm mm -hmm. what would God have me do it's important for you and I that we I want you to read the rest of this. My time is, is getting getting short, but we have to be separated. And that is we have to this, we have to do that. It says we have to do that. And above and I, I gotta end look at verse eight. Skipping down to eight. And above all things have fervent love one another for love will cover a multitude of sins be hospitable to one another without running it says as each one had received a gift a gift minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God if anyone speak let him speak as the oracles of God if anyone minister let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. That in all things God, that in all things God may be glorified through Christ Jesus, to whom belongs the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. One other word I want to leave from the New Testament is the word that we find in John 17 and 17. But there Jesus was praying and he said, sanctify them. Talking to God in his prayer. He said, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. We are sanctified by this, this word of God. Going to the Old Testament Proverbs now, Proverbs 7. Proverbs 7. My son, 
Keep my words and treasure my commandments within you. Keep my commandments and live. And my law as an apple of your eyes. Bind them on your finger. Write them on the tablets of your heart. I don't want you just to listen to me preach. I want you to open up. Look at the word sanctification. Look at these. There's others. But we can see that it ends up right on your heart. Too many people have them up here, but they haven't put them here. God be with you till we meet.